in our in our own work, I think we encounter um, bioethical issues in a few different ways. And so, one is anytime we're dealing with um, experiments in living animals, there are certain standards that we have to maintain uh, about the treatment of those animals, and and we also um, try to plan using statistical tests to make sure that we use enough animals to get a definitive answer, but no more than we actually need to do an experiment. From the standpoint of using human materials, we encounter issues of bioethics in two different ways. And they're, they're in some ways related, and I think this goes to the development of these, a, a lot of these new um, high capacity technologies that are being deployed in biology at the moment. So on one hand, anytime we use human samples, um, there are a set of rules that are in place to maintain the anonymity of, of um, patients. And so, for example, when tumor samples are collected, they're anonymized, and we have no way of tracing back mate the material that we're analyzing to um, the patient that was its source. Now, the difficulty comes as, as we are more and more able to sequence people's complete genomes um, for reasonable cost and in a very short time. If you think about how long the Human Genome Project um, took and what its cost was, I mean, it was astronomical um, compared to today when we could conceivably sequence an entire human genome in probably a week, maybe two weeks, um, and, and presently for a cost of forty to fifty thousand dollars. And that time that it, the time that it's taking to resequence a complete genome and the cost of doing so um, is dropping continuously to the point where really probably by the end of this year it'll be down to ten thousand dollars and maybe one week and who knows where we'll be in another year or so. Um, essentially once you've determined that genomic sequence um, there is a unique identifier, un uh, an identifier unique to the person from which the sample was derived. Now, if we go to publish data derived from that sequence, we are obligated to, to put um, the primary, you know, the raw data uh, to make it available to the community. So that means that a sample has turned into a sequence which is unique to that individual, which then essentially becomes in some ways public. Now, for other investigators to access that, they need to have um, specific bioethics training, etc. Um, but that that information is is out there, and although it's not immediately connected to the person from which that sample was derived, it is in some ways eventually connectable. And so I, I think that the, one of the places where we really struggle now is using the power of these new sequencing tools to try to understand biology and how we can do that in a way um, that doesn't necessarily put um, the sequence of, of many people's genomes essentially um, freely accessible on the, on the web. And I think this is something that a lot of people are struggling with at the moment as the sequencing technologies that, I, that I've mentioned become more and more widely available within the academic community. We need to establish um, ways to, to, I think at least, anonymize the information um, that we um, provide to the community without um, degrading the quality of the science that we do and, and without hampering the ability of others to analyze that data and reproduce our, our work or at least verify our conclusions. I, I think it will happen. A lot of it's driven I, there, there, there is a, a sort of a tug of war between um, maximizing people's access to your raw information, um, because essentially, you know, you've spent the money, you've spent the time, you've produced this resource, you've analyzed it in one way, but it could probably be analyzed in in uh, an infinite in an infinite variety of ways um, by others, and so you want to you want to have people um, maximally able to make use of the data you generate, um, and, and also able to, as I said, verify your conclusions. On the other hand, um, you know, there is this drive to maintain privacy, 
And in the end, I think what's going to have to happen is that the community um, will have to establish a set of procedures that are universally acceptable um, to allow um, sequence to remain private um, and anonymous without uh, destroying the value of the data that we publish. And scientists can take a lead in this, journals, um, scientific journals could take the lead in this, um, but it's something that we're going to face uh, remarkably soon.